Hello there kitties, I'm Kari, the vacuum chip witch. And today I've got something interesting on my bench. This is a divergence meter. Like in Steins Gate. No, really. Technically... Technically I could say this is a uh, divergence meter. Because it uh, measures the difference in time of uh, relay contacts uh, Switching on uh, or off, so uh, <laughs> how uh, it measures uh, how much uh, this uh, the times uh, diverge um, between themselves because uh, sometimes you want uh, to have really synchronous uh, switching on um, on a relay, and this is the device to test that. So. Let's go over to the bench, take it apart and show you how it looks inside and how it works because uh, I spent a good few weeks uh, reverse engineering the damn thing because it was uh, a little bit complicated to, to trace down uh, all those traces as well. It was very confusing then, the PCB layout was uh, quite, <laughs> quite wacky. Here and there, here and there, here and there. Lots of backtracking on uh, those uh, traces. So without further ado, let's go over to the bench. And get some more light. That's more like it. So uh, this page uh, enclosure it was made in uh, 1970s uh, in Poland. On the back panel we've got uh, the main skirt, uh, fuse socket, grounding part uh, and um, the relay uh, power and, uh, and coil uh, terminals. There's a nameplate uh, on the side. Maybe I can zoom on in. ZPUA, uh, the automation device uh, manufacturing works, uh, UBZ-1, made in uh, 1983, so uh, it looks like uh, this is 70 stack, uh, but uh, they made them uh, well into 1980s. So on the front panel we've got uh, a BNC socket and a uh, start button. As it will soon turn out, um, the socket uh, is parallel with the button, allowing for external com control. The reset button, range switch button, uh, times 1 or times 10 and uh, two mode switches uh, one for testing the <coughs> on contact and uh, the normally open contact and uh, the other one for testing the normally closed contacts and we've got uh, six terminals pairs of terminals for, for uh, three contacts because uh, usually those devices were used uh, in uh, in power control systems and uh, automation systems for testing the conductors and uh, some uh, other high power switching devices so uh, those uh, those devices uh, were mainly designed uh, for three phase uh, power both uh, low and medium voltage and of course uh, here we've got uh, indicator leds uh, for the for the contact uh, close and we've got three groups of uh, of nixie tubes 
That's one more Nixie than in the Steins Gate di divergence meter. So let's take the unscrewer. The outer sleeve goes to the side. So what do we have on the inside of uh, the enclosure? That's a very nice view covering the whole device. And of course we've got the row of Nixies, LC-513 made by uh, Unitra Dolom. Quite lovely, quite uh, lovely Nixies. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the first Nixie tube I got uh, in my life, uh, it was uh, LC5-513. And just look at the wires uh, going to the Nixies. Nicely twisted, uh, thing of beauty, joy forever. And right behind those Nixies, we've got uh, two rows of uh, integrated circuits. The, the one closest uh, to the Nixies, um, this is the 74141 um, driver and um, BCD to, to decimal uh, decoder. The other one is 7490. This is uh, a uh, BCD decade counter. And we've got uh, three Nexis uh, ganged uh, together. The carry out uh, from uh, one counter goes to the input of uh, of the second counter and uh, then uh, the second counters carry out <laughs> goes into the third counter there there's uh, nothing after the third counter we've got uh, three counter decoder driver and display uh, sub assemblies uh, each one for every one of uh, of the contacts because um, they are measured uh, separately. And then there's the control logic of the whole device. Look at um, look at the traces uh, on the printed circuit board. <laughs> they go go all, all over the all over the place. So. It's a little bit dusty. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, there is some form of a uh, conformal coating on uh, the PCB. It's all nice and shiny. Bet my ass Paul Carson would love it. That's, uh, that's actually some... Uh, Nice piece of uh, Polish uh, electronic engineering. And you had another bit of uh, traces going forward and backwards and um, that made it uh, quite difficult to reverse engineer because uh, the counter then the counter parts, uh, then the driver parts, uh, they were actually very easy to reverse engineer, but uh, all the control logic uh, that goes to those uh, isostat switches, uh, that really 
gave me a headache. Those isostat switches, uh, they are pretty similar to what was found in uh, old uh, tectronic scopes. Though those were made uh, on a uh, license from uh, the isostat company, made by uh, Eltra in Bydgoszcz, and those switches were all over in Polish electronics. They were both uh, in uh, professional and uh, and consumer electronics, hi-fi gear, scopes, whatnot. Everything had them. And of course, there's the power transformer. There's the mains uh, isostat uh, switch uh, that has uh, wider insulation gaps and uh, more force uh, on uh, on return to prevent uh, arcing and there's this uh, there's this part uh, controlling the the relay actually the devices i got it uh, it was damaged uh, this uh, this very control part uh, it didn't work because it uh, turned on the relay but uh, it didn't turn it off and what i found out was that uh, it uses two fire resistors one fire resistor is pretty straightforward because um, it uh, it goes between the supply uh, positive uh, and the relay coil but uh, the other fire star it uh, puts a uh, 2.2 microfarad capacitor across the first fire star fire star or scr semiconductor relay and uh, by shorting the fire star, you effectively turn it off. And uh, there is uh, separation uh, between the control circuit and uh, the digital circuits uh, of the device done by um, the ferrite uh, core transformers. And of course, there's the power supply using an uh, equivalent of uh, a 7812, uh, oh, sorry, 7805, labeled uh, SFC2309. I recapped uh, the power supply. This is the 1000 microfarad. Uh, low voltage filter cap and uh, this is the 22 microfarad uh, high voltage uh, filter cap for the Nixies. This is a full bridge rectifier for the Nixie power and uh, those are the um, plate resistors uh, for each one of the Nixie tubes. Those wires, uh, this whole bundle, it goes uh, right to the Nixie tube sockets. Those are the plate wires. So that was quite a task to reverse engineer this thing, learn how it works. In order to start uh, reverse engineering it, uh, I had, I had to write down the pinouts for the TTR chips uh, because I don't uh, have it uh, all in my head yet. So uh, those, um, those are pinouts for all the chips uh, found in the device. Let's start uh, with the counter and uh, decoder part. The, 
the pulses uh, on the input uh, come in on the uh, on uh, the A input of the 7490. Let me let me check if I'm I'm correct. Yes, uh, A input. Uh, this uh, acts as a decade counter and uh, also uh, outputs the the current uh, number to the 74141 uh, on the a b c and d outputs of uh, of the binary coded decimal output while also having a uh, I uh, carry out uh, on the D output that goes into the input of uh, the next counter and the decoder has uh, 4 inputs uh, and uh, 10 outputs <coughs> there's also the common reset for all the counters uh, not just in a group but in the device uh, in general and uh, this is driven uh, both uh, from the reset line uh, and uh, and if you if you change the, the range uh, it will also interrupt um, the line uh, if you change the on or off the normally open, normally closed uh, measurement type, it will still it will still interrupt uh, this line and uh, reset the, the counter. And uh, the reset line also drives uh, the the flip flops uh, in the <coughs> sense and uh, in the contact uh, action detection circuitry I'll move on to it uh, real soon here we've got uh, the master clock generator it's a uh, it's uh, crystal uh, stabilized goes into a uh, decade counter that uh, reduces the the frequency down to 100 kilohertz uh, this drives uh, the output uh, that is coil control uh, logic Another counter divides it by 10 to 10 kilohertz and uh, another one to 1 kilohertz and uh, you can uh, change uh, the counter frequency and uh, the measurement uh, range the, and the time measurement range uh, by uh, pushing this button one position uh, uses uh, higher frequency and the other one uses lower and here we've got uh, the heart of uh, of the control logic uh, we've got uh, three optocouplers uh, relay contacts uh, that uh, power the optocouplers then uh, inverters that uh, allow us to decide whether it should act on uh, turning it off or turning it on and uh, NAND gates uh, for controlling the NAND gates for controlling the counters while also uh, having some uh, some flip -flop flops here 
and uh, the outputs of those flip-flops are driven back, uh, so this is actually a closed-loop control. I also made a, another simplified schematic, I, I will show it to you now. Uh, maybe not uh, maybe not that simplified and uh, I seem to have forgotten one thing there's the clock input uh, on the flip-flop and that goes straight uh, that goes straight uh, to the output So whenever we turn on uh, the normally open uh, contact uh, in the in the on position, then the default one uh, it pulls down the collector of the transistor. So here we've got um, a uh, high state. Uh, going to, to the gate while also uh, going to the input of, um, of the flip-flop then the clock input <coughs> assuming that uh, this holds uh, high and uh, there's nothing happening on the clear and uh, preset lines uh, we will have the pulse on the output of um, of the flip flop that goes right uh, to the that goes right uh, to this contact and if if I uh, not sure if I uh, didn't uh, get something wrong here. It would be pretty illogical, but <laughs> I guess that uh, those should actually get uh, held down uh, whenever um, the contact is uh, activated. Held down and, uh, and the LED would be lit uh, on the line. So that would be a latching circuit. And uh, if this is latched, then uh, whenever the line is uh, enabled, that is, um, the, the circuit is go from the relay controller and the start circuitry. And uh, whenever there's uh, the 1 or 10 kilohertz uh, signal uh, from the clock we get a pulse on uh, on the gate and that feeds into the Nixie counter so that would be the control logic for starting the the relay this is the BNC and uh, and the start button And uh, normally this is pulled up, but uh, whenever we ground it, uh, we will send a uh, low state here, so uh, this goes high. This uh, flip-flop uh, gets a pulse already. <coughs> Going low. And... Uh, Low or high? I'm, I'm not exactly, not exactly sure. I I think the negated Q it might actually go go high. Anyway, if it goes high, it goes to the gate, and also it goes to this gate. And when uh, those two inputs uh, are are high, this goes low, allowing the K 
capacitor that was uh, previously charged to discharge through a uh, 240 kilo ohms resistor. While it is discharging, it uh, it uh, activates the transistor that. Uh, then the collector of the transistor is normally low, so this goes uh, this goes up. Uh, but uh, if uh, if the time uh, passes, uh, there's uh, this uh, capacitor discharges, and <coughs> this goes high, this goes low. And the start LED starts uh, starts shining, and uh, this gate uh, this gate uh, goes off, while uh, this gate uh, goes on to the rhythm uh, dictated by um, the oscillator. So uh, this gate would control the turn on and uh, this gate would control the turn off. It would automatically turn off uh, after the time uh, defined by uh, 100 micro and uh, 0.24 mega ohm uh, time constant. And then we've got uh, the ferrite core transformers that uh, isolate uh, the logic from uh, the relay control and uh, whenever we have some uh, whenever we have some uh, 100 kilohertz uh, going through the gate and the transistor it uh, it will be transformed uh, to the secondary side rectified and it uh, drives uh, a uh, SCR the <coughs> the fire star the big one this fire star <laughs> let's uh, let's the current through to the coil and the coil <laughs> The return from the coil goes back to the relay supply. And this fire star will stay latched uh, until it is put out of action by the control circuitry for the off uh, for the um, off uh, transistor and uh, fire star. And this fire star it will put uh, the positive voltage uh, to the other end of uh, this capacitor and this will actually put the cathode uh, higher at the potential of, uh, of the supply voltage because uh, the capacitor is, uh, is discharged and it, uh, even when it uh, charges, it will discharge uh, through the 0.22 mega ohm and, uh, and the coil and uh, the flyback diode. So this will uh, turn this fire star off, but uh, there's uh, not enough current uh, for this fire star to stay on because it has a uh, large resistance and a uh, capacitance that uh, blocks the DC altogether. And of course the power supply is pretty straightforward because we've got a transformer supply for the low voltage and high voltage. And the logic is uh, powered from a linear regulator while the Nixie tubes are powered uh, from uh, an uh, unregulated supply.
and uh, I will turn it on. But uh, doing some experiments with this device, uh, this will be a thing for another video. So we've got Nexus coming up. And normally, in order to start um, the thing, I, I would have to reset it, uh, change the mode if I want. And uh, after connecting the relay contacts uh, and uh, the coil and uh, its power supply, I would press start. And the Nixie tubes are counting like crazy. What light uh, can give you the better view? Of course, uh, now they are reset, but change the range. Now they uh, count slower at uh, 1 kilohertz. And they will keep counting until the contact is made. I can demonstrate it with a vicarious uh, switching device. Look at that. It stopped. The other one also stopped. And also stopped. Since it's at 5 volts DC, I don't have to worry about uh, getting shocked. Because uh, I know the device and now you know it too. So that would be it for today's uh, adventure with, uh, with the divergence meter. <laughs> and uh, the next episode uh, I will do some experiments with uh, with uh, relays uh, going on or, and off uh, both the normally open and normally closed circuits and I will try to find uh, some unusual uses for, for this uh, meter <laughs> let's hack it together with Carrie at the bench. And for now, stay determined and carry on. <laughs> <laughs>